Linux file system structure. Armin Shariarian. Linux file system structure. The Linux file system, just as the Unix file system before it, has a common layout. No matter how many disks you have installed in your system, everything will fall under slash. The root folder. The common directories you will see in a Linux system are as follows. Slash bin. Commands slash binary files that have to be available when the system is booted in. Single user mode. Slash boot. Boot files are stored here including the configuration of the bootloader, the kernel, and any initial RAM disk files needed to boot the kernel. Slash dev. A pseudophile system that contains entries for hardware devices for programs to access. Slash etc. Configuration files related to the operating system and system services. Slash home. The directory containing the user's home directories. Slash lib. Library files that contain shared code and functions that any program can use. Slash opt. Optional, third-party software is loaded here. Slash proc. A pseudophile system that has directories containing files related to running processes, including memory maps the command line used to run the program, and other essential system information related to the program. Slash root. The home directory of the root user. Slash spin. System binaries that also need to be available in single user mode. Slash tmp. Temporary files are stored here. Slash usr. Read only user data. Include spin, doc, lib, spin, and share subdirectories. Slash var. Variable data including state information about running processes, log files, run. Time data, and other temporary files. All of these files are expected to change in. Size or existence during the running of the system. You can also see the owner, user, and group, both of which are root in these cases. This is followed by the file size, the last time the file or directory was modified, and then the name of the file or directory. You may notice at the top that there are files that start with a dot, or period. The dot files and directories store user-specific set, tings and logs. Because they are managed by the applications that create them, as a general rule, they are hidden from regular directory listings. The program touch can be used to update the modified date and time to the moment. That touch is run. If the file doesn't exist, touch will create an empty file that has the modified and created timestamp set to the moment touch was executed. Other file and directory related commands that will be really useful are ones related to setting permissions and owners. Every file and directory gets a set of permissions. As indicated previously, as well as having an owner and a group. To set permissions on a file or directory, you use the command command, which can take a numerical value for each of the possible permissions. Three bits are used, each either on or off for whether the permission is set or not. Since they are bits, we are talking about powers of two. It's easiest to remember the powers of two as well as the order read, write, and exe. Cute. If you read left to right as the people of most Western cultures do, you will think about the most significant value being to the left. Since we are talking about bits, we have the powers of 2 with exponents 0 to 2. Read has the value of 4. Write has the value 2. Finally, execute has the value of 1.
As an example, if you want to set both read and write permissions on a file, you would use 4 plus 2, or 6. The bit pattern would be 110, if it's easier to see it that way. There are three sets of permissions, owner, group, and world, everyone. When you are setting permissions, you specify a numeric value for each, meaning you have a three-digit value. As an example, in order to set read, write, and execute for the owner but just read for the group and everyone, you use Kmod 744 Lename, where Lename is the name of the file you are setting permissions for. You could also just specify the bit you want either set or unset, if that's easier. For example, you could use Kmod U plus X Lename to add the executable bit for the owner. The Linux file system is generally well structured, so you can be sure of where to look for files. However, in some cases, you may need to search for files. On Windows or Mac OS, you may understand how to look for files, as the necessary tools are embed. DED in the file managers. If you are working from the command line, you need to know the means you can use to locate files. The first is locate, which relies on a system database. The program updated will update that database, and when you use locate, the system will query the database to find the location of the file. If you are looking for a program, you can use another utility. The program which will tell you where the program is located. This may be useful if you have various loca shins where executables are kept. The thing to note here is that which uses the path variable in the user's environment to search for the program. If the executable is found in the path, the full path to the executable is displayed. A more multi-purpose program for location is ND. While ND has a lot of capabilities, a simple approach is to use something like ND slash name foo print. You don't have to provide the print parameter, since printing the results is the default behavior, it's just how I learned how to run the command and it's stayed with me. Using ND, you spec. Efedi the path to search in. ND performs a recursive search, meaning it starts at the directory specified and searches all directories under the specified directory. In the preceding example, we are looking for the file named foo. You can use regular xprays, zions, including wildcards, in your search. If you want to find a file that begins with the letters foo, you use nd slash name foo asterisk print. If you are using search patterns, you need to put the string and pattern inside double quotes. While nd has a lot of kappa billy ties, this will